you should you should get going first, Derek. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll jump in since I have trouble doing that sometimes. Um, yeah, I think today I will have to jump off right at five. So um, I've been mostly I spent like a lot of today catching up with Dwayne and Andrew, um, preparing to do meetings with the CMs. And uh, this morning I finished um, going through our old bombs and uh, basically making sure the quotes, uh, well, we, we really didn't have pricing on a lot of stuff. Like we didn't have um, a good pricing um, estimate for quantity stuff uh, on the PCBA from our standpoint. Like we just went out to, to DigiKey or actually um, Kevin used L this Chinese company LCSC a lot. So I did that just so we'd have a benchmark so we could call BS on the CMs uh, on their bomb cost pricing. So what I did learn is they are giving us a little bit of a discount, not a lot, but a little bit. Um, so that's that's valuable. So now we have a kind of a benchmark, a really pretty solid benchmark of our internal costs versus how the CMs are stacking up. And I would say across the board, they're all pretty, of the three that we've been getting, they're all pretty similar. So that's, I mean, I guess that's good. Um, necessarily like this ideal huge discount kind of thing that we may have been, maybe wanted. Um, I think the reality is it's, it's cheaper than what we do ourselves, but not, not a ton. And that's mostly, I think, because of the quantity. So we'll ask about that um, when we do these meetings. So Dwayne's going to set, start setting those up for next week. Um, but yeah, it's all, I mean, from the engagement point of view, uh, these three very much seem to want our business. They're very um, uh, fast at responding to, to things and, and getting more details on stuff. So on that side of things, I feel good. So. <clears throat> I think that's called sales. <laughs> Well, I mean, to me, like, you know, I was always scared that like, who wants to do 2,500 units a month, like on the CM side, like that doesn't seem like a lot, you know, um, but, um, you know, these three seem to want our business and I mean, this, you know, margins are real small in manufacturing. So <clears throat> that was my concern is like, you know, you'd get, get them like, yeah, we're not, you know, we'll, we'll just. Give them enough attention, but if they become a nuisance, we'll stop paying attention to them. But that doesn't seem to be the case, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, that's been mostly my time. Uh, <laughs> it's just uh, doing that stuff. So a couple of meetings this afternoon, and then working on the bomb stuff in the morning. All right, thanks for the update. Oh, the other well, the other thing, the, the, in regards to all this issues, you know, we don't have a UI spec uh, in terms of what do we do with, um, you know, interrupting skills and all that. So I was curious, you know, I always like to look at what Google and Amazon doing is so like not make it more complicated than that. Um, and they really, as far as I can tell, only have two classifications. They have media or, you know, what we call the common play, anything like music, whatever, and then everything else. So media never stops until you specifically tell it to stop. So you can um, interrupt media and ask about Wikipedia, the new, uh, you know, Wikipedia, weather, you know, whatever. Um, and it's always going to come back to whatever that media was playing once that skill stopped. Now, if it's not a media skill, they just interrupt each other and never go back. So if it's like weather, and I interrupt weather and ask about the time it is, it doesn't ever go back to weather uh, and vice versa. So like that is just two, two classifications. So I guess in our terms, that would be system. You know, you got system skills and common play and that's it. And uh, if we wanted to adopt that methodology, we would say, you know, common play continues until it's explicitly told to stop and system skills interrupt each other and never go back. Um, so anyway, that's that would be a, a kind of a simple way to address it, uh, as, as opposed to maybe trying to overthink it too much. But I'm not opposed to. Me personally, I think there are some skills that you know maybe go a little bit longer, like Wikipedia or something that you may want to go back to. Um, but I, 
I don't know. Like, like I like to look at them and say, do we want to make it more complicated? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> so anyway. Well, if you split it into commonplace skills and not commonplace skills, you don't even need a category at that point. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, I, know, you already have a commonplace framework. If you're using it, it behaves this way. If you're not, it behaves this way. <laughs> exactly. I mean, so if we wanted to match what they're doing, that, that would be the, the quickest way probably to get there at this point. Without. And the easiest to just implement and yeah, as a, as a first pass. Of course, we still need to write all that up, but you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and all of that is is uh, orthogonal to the skill state concept, which is still useful. yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the most part, like I mean, I I let you guys hash all that out. As long as from the user point of view, <laughs> it's doing. I can describe. Okay, this is what I want. What, what I ideally like it from the user point of view to, to occur. How you get there? Well, that's your guys' fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I don't on. understand. So, so are you saying that's the generic rules you'd like the system to operate under? Well, I, I'm not saying that. I'm not making a decision. I'm just saying, like I did. I spent like probably 15, 20 minutes. You know, benchmarking, not totally. Yeah. Not every skill possible, but like, you know, essentially the equivalent of our skills. Um, but I'm pretty confident that that's probably the only two classes they have, essentially. Yeah. So um, if you're if so on theirs, if you're listening to a description of something from Wiki and a timer goes off, the Wiki stops, right? Yeah, you just don't go back. Um, so. Well, you know, I haven't actually tested. Uh, you well, know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just asking because I've been actually what I did was take that statement out yesterday and commit. And then I've been testing today with the behavior with that statement out. And it's, it's interesting. Um, obviously, stop doesn't work correctly. But it's almost as you mentioned, which is a very simplistic single level approach. So that would be interesting. In other words, the edge case is like you're in the middle of trying to create something, I don't know, an alarm or something, and a timer goes off. Does that cancel what you were doing and you start again? I mean, these are the scenarios that we need guidance on. So this is good. Work. Yeah, I think we need to we need to sit down and write up a spec and yeah, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. This is not a decision. I just yeah. I we definitely need something written up. I'm just saying it it might be a little simpler than you know. Yeah, well, since maybe. I took that out, I noticed that if I was playing music, and I asked it a wiki question, after about four minutes of wiki, it would stop and the music would start playing again. That's how it works right now. If that's what you want. This is a trivial issue. <laughs> well, no, no, I wouldn't want it. You know, it needs to be, yeah, not five minutes. It needs to go back we to stack. We stack. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, interesting. Yeah. So I think you know, mission accomplished. I just wanted us to start thinking about some of these edge cases and scenarios. So this is great. Yeah, and I didn't benchmark a lot of the edge cases, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, what happens if it, a timer interrupts you while you're, you know starting another skill or you know interacting another skill so yeah there's there's some things to to look at and define um but i think where my head is going is that we can basically say common play and everything else with yeah some more definition around edge cases and such i i think, I think that that could work i think, as a, I think what you really saw place. unless did you see some documentation where they said they only had two types of skills no, this is just well, from a user. Yeah, I, think what you, I think what you really saw was media skills, system skills, and user skills. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we still need to spec it ourselves, but I, I don't think we need to overthink it, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, uh, yeah. Um, I guess. I do want to want to get to that if I'm holding anyone up. Uh, just the hardware stuff is, is a lot that's, of work. That's not a thing that's holding us up. That'll we'll, we will come to that after we do a, a pass on all of the existing essential skills. We okay. don't need you to hold us up. We can do a good job enough of that ourselves. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. That was long enough. So yeah. Sorry. I yield the floor. All right. <laughs> yes. Uh, How goes the, what is it, uh, 2102? 
Yeah, it's been going good. Um, I spent a bit, had to spend a bit of time yesterday messing with the uh, dockers um, to get the the test runners working again. Um, our Docker registry uh, seems to be inaccessible. We don't really need to use it though, so it's like I, I don't know if we use it for anything official. Um, other than this old these old test runner things, um, but they can just you can just generate the containers on the fly, which only takes like ten minutes or something. Which you know, when we're running this once every six months, is not <laughs> it's not a big deal. Um, so that compared to maintaining a custom Docker registry is, you know, <laughs> um, anyway. But uh, so far, all the skills are passing, um, except for. Um, a plasma activity skill. So, um, but it's most likely because the the test environment doesn't have plasma in it. So, um, um, I'm just gonna test that one manually and and then call it good. Uh, haven't run the VK test on everything yet. So this is based on the old test runner, um, which you know at the very least runs all the all the old tests and checks that everything loads properly and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I've got to get around to the VK test now. Um, but other than that, I think... Um, I think... Uh, yeah, we're, we're in good shape there, so... Um, yeah, that was the most interesting stuff yesterday. There's probably other things, but yeah. Right. Okay. Um, is the uh, I hate to ask, so I'll ask later. Chris Bear. Um. So yeah, I did, yesterday I helped Gez out with an issue with our um, LDAP server. That is still an issue, but I fixed it up enough that he could log into Jenkins and do what he needed to do for twenty one oh two. Um. Part of the problem there is that I don't know squat about LDAP or the tool we have called Free IPA, so I wouldn't even begin to know how to fix it. And if restart didn't work, and the restart didn't really work, so um, we need to decide if that's something we want me to spend a few hours or a day on trying to figure out, or if that's something um, that maybe we don't even need. <laughs> um, because as far as I know, the only thing that's really serving is maybe the old Jenkins instance and the Wikipedia that we have lying about that nobody uses. So, okay. Um, uh, Josh might know something about that. Um, I don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if, if he implemented I'm that. I'm sure or... he knows about it because it's the uh, directory protocol for Windows, and he's a Windows guy. OK. Well, it's not, that's the only pain it's caused, and it's been down for a while, it's the only pain it's caused. So. Um, I don't know how big a deal it is, but mm. um, anyway, that's that's the state of that. We can talk about what we want to do there. I had a short meeting with um, Sarah and Leanna today about the grant mm -hmm. things. Um, gave them a bit of an education. They weren't they had no idea how, what the stack does or how it works or anything. So right. I gave them a crash course on Mycroft, and um, and they have some ideas about how to move forward with that that don't involve me. So. Um, right. <laughs> so they're gonna yeah, I, I did have a follow-up with Leanna. She talked with me for just a few minutes. And so they're they're squared away. They've got what they need. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, she, she said that she was gonna talk to you after she came up with an idea. So so yeah, we're, that's I'm, I'm not gonna deal with that anymore. Um and then I'm just about done with my first pass through the timer scale, which is the refactoring pass. And the next thing I'll do is start running the VK test against it and see what I broke and if anything. And, See if I can make more of the tests to work, that kind of thing. OK. <clears throat> um, all right, sounds good. Ken. So yeah, like I mentioned, I removed the offensive line uh, and tested today to see what the behavior was with that, as well as responding some, to some uh, questions on the design. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I, I understand how it's working now. Uh, be interested to see if that meets our requirements, um, and if not, where. I suspect I know, but I'll wait for feedback. 
So that's where I'm at on that, and that's what I did today. Okay. So you were going to be uh, playing around with common play uh, and looking into any possible uh, re required changes there. Is uh, is your conclusion that basically we don't need to do anything with that right now? No. Um, there's competing, once again, architectural input on this particular project. Uh, so I was sent a bunch of documentation regarding open voice OS's implementation and um, looking at their commonplace service and surrounding support. And then I went back and looked at what we have. Um, so what we have is deficient. Um, what Jarvis created is a bit different. There's going to have to be buy-in on backward compatibility issues, on architectural issues, on differences between Derek's spec and what his groupings are and things like that. So, you know, it's it's going to be another one of these, you know, everybody's got an opinion and it's going to be difficult to come to consensus on it, um, which is why I kind of transferred it over to Chris V in an attempt to get somebody a little more diplomatic to handle that sort of activity. I, I don't mind doing the work once that stuff been decided. I just don't want to be in the middle of the maelstrom again. So where I was coming from was if I were to just have the first whack at it, I would simply add the generic method uh, methods that are missing from it and associated message bus messages, which would be things like fast forward and rewind and skip and next and previous, and then just create a generic requirement spec that says common play skills that, you know, uh, want the following capabilities, should override these methods and leave these alone and yada, yada, yada. Uh, so that's what I would have done with it at first blush, but I don't know because I didn't really get into it from an architectural perspective. I got into it from a user perspective and looking at what I would do when I was doing the music skill and what it was missing. So that being said, um, no, I wasn't planning on jumping right into the next architectural maelstrom that comes down the pike, just like I don't automatically jump on the end of the bank line when I see one. They're not pleasant experiences. So um, I was kind of hoping that Chris V could handle that and I could move on to the remaining skills that need attention. Well, the uh, yeah, I mean, it was always the intention, you know, right now what we're working on are the essential skills, right? We're not right. trying to get into any redefining any behavior at this point. We're just trying to make oh, no, the no, no, no. What I, we do I have coming, work. Where I was coming from was once Derek has a whack at this release, then he's going to see some obvious things and say, gee, the uh, volume skill shouldn't behave like this. The time and date skill shouldn't cancel that. That this skill shouldn't do. And I can facilitate those changes relatively quickly. Like I could probably handle anything he come up, comes up with in a day of all the skills. So I was just thinking that would be a more productive use of my time rather than having me jump into another architectural morass. Yeah, agreed. I mean, that's. I think that's kind of out of scope for where we are right now. Anyway. Yeah. But but I think what you what you said around just adding those basic basic things like i think that's very helpful as the as the first pass because then it's going to mean that you know we can actually have like the the new skill work properly with a ui um and you know it'll work for for basic skills but it's not going to do everything but yeah i thought that sounded like a really good way forward well okay so who devised the common play uh system that we have right now and is there a spec for it Mostly Penrod. I, I think there was a spec for it. Oh, okay. So this was internally. I thought I thought for some reason that this might have come from the community. So no, no, we we did that. At least what what's there today, we did ourselves. I mean, I'm sure it's been modified since we built it initially. But who did the original work? Okay. Probably. Yeah, that's not fair. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I I just don't know. It's it's a good start. Like so many things we have. But they seem to be like when you start working your way down the hierarchy, they they kind of peter out after the first level. You know what I mean? Like people look and they go, well, I can foresee this problem and they solve that. And, the, and we have on our hands solves that. But when you actually do your thinking through and you realize the logical conclusion of some of these designs, you realize, yeah, it's not going to handle 
a more structured kind of environment. So, yeah, uh, I think I touched upon that in that diatribe I put in that uh, matter mode where I said, you know, I was explaining to Ake that I wouldn't do this if this was for core, but this is for a potential consumer product that we want to control the behavior of. I don't care what a development environment does. You can create whatever you want and have whatever rules you want in your skills and have your skills communicate and make their decisions independent. But in a, in a product where you're trying to have a controlled response to every environment, all states and all events, then you've got to start, you know, enforcing and imposing your will at a system level. So there is an interesting of, point, though. Are we going to have wind up with two different implementations, one that our developers really like and one that our consumers are going to? Are we going to? We're going no. to <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, you kind of have that now, right? Because you've got the developer branch, but then you've got the Mark II feature branch we're working on. Um, somebody thinks at some point in time they're going to get merged, and that would be wonderful, but I don't think that's going to be a trivial issue. It won't be, but I don't think anything we've done so far in the Mark II branch is really for a consumer product. I think it's just stuff that's specific to the Mark II that we want to be able to move fast on. Well, and I don't think there's anything well, think in the Mark II branch that is fundamentally different. It's just that we need to, like, we, you know, we, we wanted to move to the HAL so that we're not just, like, merging a whole bunch of Mark II stuff into every single instance of Mycroft and then, you know, merge a Mark III a whole bunch of Mark III code and Mark IV code and, you know, whatever, whatever. Well, that that's good news that it won't be difficult to do the reverse merge. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I don't, I don't know how to answer that. But I do know that if we want a controlled environment, we've got to make some tough decisions that maybe some backward compatibility with existing skills is not going to work because our UI design requires a certain uh, behavior. But mm -hmm. we won't know that until we cross that bridge so and i'm sure we'll piss some people off too people on community members or this used to work this way and we needed to work this way for this and there's going to be some of that but we'll work through it well i mean we've got i mean yeah every every api system deals with this right i mean android apple they're constantly rolling out new versions you know which, which is why which is why i said it's not inconceivable that the mark ii is running a different branch because the behaviors might it might be desirable to make them different. I have a friend that works on tools like Bazel and such. He's actually the director of that group at Google. And their internal tools that they publish to the community like Bazel uh, have different behavior and APIs when it's used internally than externally. That's not uncommon. Right. OK, well, yeah, we're going to have to have a serious discussion about that um, in the near future. Uh, but for now, the next skills that you were assigned, Ken, uh, were all the query skills, right? I do believe so. Do something with the fact that we've got multiple query skills and maybe bring them under something like a common play umbrella for query. Well, at, um, I mean, right now what we're doing is we're trying to address bugs. That's that's really, yeah. you know. So right. I think the place to start is bugs. Uh, note any behavior before we get into anything that's like a structural change, you know, coming up with a new common query or whatever, you know, um, just to be clear, I, I think common, we should identify the problem first. Common query exists. So like they, ah. they're, yeah, there are multiple skills, but they, they sit under a common, a common query. Okay. Common query. So yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So any behavioral issues like this isn't causing an existing skill to stop or something, I'll just reassign those tickets to, to Derek and then the actual bugs I'll address. Right. Okay. Well, there's some simple stuff under it. Like, I mean, I, I would, I don't know, I would probably consider this a bug, but like, we do have a common query framework, and some questions that you ask can be answered by one of those, um, you know, one of those services, but it's being answered by the wrong one and giving, you know, not, not a correct answer. So, um, for example, like, it's going to, Wolfram, um, but Wikipedia can answer correctly. But why is that, that? Why is <laughs> again? This is going to be down, coming down to specifications. What is the preferred behavior? Do you want Wolfram to take precedence over Wiki, or vice versa? Well, so that's a, that's a, that's a. I don't. I don't think. I don't know if we can even solve the problem. Yeah. Um, 
because it's a confidence issue, I think. Yes, that's absolutely correct. And, and this is what's, you know, kind of where I was coming from regarding different code lines, if you will. Um, we don't really have a lot of protections against not well behaved skills in this system. So they can do what they want. They can consume every converse. They can set the confidence level to 100% on every query. They can do what they want. Um, that's fine for a development environment. I don't know that that's fine for a consumer product uh, environment. Yeah, we certainly have to address that before we get to yeah. you know, so unleashing the marketplace on people. But for our own internal development, it's not yeah. an issue. So like my point, Derek, is that if you say, well, that's kind of like a bug, I would say, what's the bug? Well, so an example, well, an example would be like, um, I haven't checked this lately, but previously, if you said like, who is the president of the United States, it would tell you about the the office of the president of the United States. When what the user really means is, you know, uh, who is I'll, currently serving as president of the United yeah. States? Yeah, um, and you just oh hit upon <laughs> what's his name? You just hit upon probably the most difficult challenge we are going to hit once we get all this mechanical crap out of the way, which is, and I forget what they call that, but that is certainly a context oriented engagement because both answers are correct. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like understanding the intent of the user, you know, where in some cases it's black and white, like what's the date, but in some cases it's not, like who's the president? <laughs> it is typically so solved, similar to when somebody says it in a following sentence by maintaining a push down stack of context. Yeah, and to actually to further explain that that issue, so it's going to Wikipedia and, it, and, and the, I think the way our API with Wikipedia works is it does the abbreviated a response, which is usually just like the first two sentences of the They Wikipedia. all do that. They yeah. all do that. Yeah. yeah. Right. And on the Wikipedia code that I have running here will give you the entire abstract correctly. DuckDuckGo doesn't have a chance because it's malformed. It doesn't grab it, and it doesn't have the code to grab it. So it just grabs effectively the summary of the title, which is always a single sentence. Yeah. So in the case of that's, the, that's behavior across the board. Question is, is that desirable or not? Well, so in the case of the Wikipedia entry, yes, the first two sentences of Wikipedia for president of the United States do not mention the current sitting president. However, if you were to go to Wolfram Alpha and ask the same question, it does just give you the response of President Biden or, you know, President Joe Biden. Which do you prefer? So, well, that's the thing. We In this case, we do prefer well, from alpha, but other than creating a new tagging system, how do we, you know, how do we solve the problem? So, well, know. yeah, I mean, so I want to know the difference between the, the role of the president versus the vice president of the United States. You just took me down a dead end where I can never get there from here. So the point being, we have a lot of work to do on our edge cases, on our uh, overall system behavior uh, it, regarding interactions. And then we certainly are going to have the contextual problems that everybody's going to have in this space. Um, but we're not there yet. So again, any kind of bugs that I see, um, since I'll be in this kind of an area, don't be surprised if the lion's share of them get kicked back with you with UI type questions. And um, yeah, I mean, and, and you know, I think maybe a potential way to solve this class of bugs for the time being is to, which I think we already have, is to have um, uh, clear ways that the user can get to the information that they want, right? Um, whether it's by rephrasing the question more more explicitly, like who is the current sitting president of the United States, right? That should, regardless of you know what service, it should come back with the right answer, um, uh, or you know, or some sort of hybrid of like giving a little bit of the answer from each of them, you know, or something like that, right? Uh, don't be surprised if I recommend that we cheat and do kind of what you see with DuckDuckGo and Wikipedia now. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't consider that cheating. I think that, you know, having a system that is that, you know, where we we predefine certain prompts as like, OK, well, we're going to prefer this method for that method for yeah. these kinds of, of questions. I don't think that's necessarily cheating. It's just priming the uh, it's effectively like the starting point of, of you know, maybe a, a simple neural 
network that would would learn this kind of stuff over time. Well, that that's how it's usually solved with a push down stack of context in the in the previous ten minutes of utterances, right, and all the concepts that were derived. But that's not what I was getting at. What I was getting at is, you might say, gee, if you're looking for the uh, declarative, then phrase your question using this style. And if you're looking for the pronoun oriented answer, then phrase your question in this manner. Just like if you want DuckDuckGo, ask who. And if you want Wiki, say, tell me about. Yeah, but ultimately those are rules you don't want to have to enforce, right, with natural language processing. It's cheating, but you'll find that you'll warm up to my ideas when we get there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I agree. No, that's exactly the kind of cheating I think we should start off with. And we are, we've already done. So I, I also feel like this is an area where we could spend, you know, $5 million and 50 people uh, to, you know, be a search engine. Um, so, is that what you think Google has spent on this problem? I assure you, it's a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the, the the cheapo hackers version of of, uh, of that, but um, yeah, I just mean like uh, I'd be hesitant for us to to be chasing down too many of these edge cases in a bug. Yeah, I think we should be. I, how much I think for the yeah, no. how much their you know features you know. At this point in time, we should be collecting uh, examples of things to be solved in the future, uh, at least in, 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 in that domain. Yeah. So they, we can report them as bugs or whatever, but they're not going to get addressed right now. Isn't there, there a spreadsheet somewhere where, where Josh was keeping all these crazy things he was asking and getting bad answers from, like asking about what a hot dog is and getting the weather? Yeah, we did have some of those. Um, I think I still have that spreadsheet. If, um, if it's, if I, I consolidated dog and getting the weather. I think that is definitely a bug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the well, hey, hot. Because... That's a hot intent in the weather skill. Not hot dog. Exactly. Right. <laughs> well, well, I mean, there is, gonna, have... is it is it hot? Is it hot outside or you know how yeah, hot is it? Yeah, that's endemic, right? That's endemic. Tell me the weather forecast for New York could match. Tell me the news. So. You know, it's it's going to be a recurring problem, and we're gonna we're gonna struggle with it for the life of this project. That we just have to come up with some generic rules and stick to them. All right. So uh, so you're going to tackle a query next. Uh, look at the bug reports. Outstanding, um, uh, Derek. If you can dig up that list of queries that wasn't returning satisfactory results, I think it'd be fun. Uh, yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this, well, is a, this is a fun area of, uh, of natural language processing, by the way. Yeah, so like I, I did kind of try and weed out some of the crazy stuff. And I do have a list that are like based on like they're like who, what, when, where type questions. And, you know, whether or not they've passed or failed as of like, it's probably like 18 months ago or whatever. But um, so they're like things like, uh, who built the Eiffel Tower? Uh, how fast can a cheetah run? What is a hot dog? Uh, when is the next leap year? Stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> I can send that over. Yeah, that would be helpful. That would be helpful. It'll get really fun when we start getting people that want to do transcription, conversational skills, but we'll drive up that bridge when we come to it. All right. Yeah, let's get the easy stuff working first. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, I don't. I don't have any development side updates. So, um, so I guess that's it for today. Uh, we'll check in again tomorrow. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Hey good. Oh, did it work? Oh, cool. Good. We fixed it then. <laughs> Ask him what hot dogging is. Uh, yeah. well, what temperature should a hot dog be? <laughs> ask, ask it what hot dogging is. You'll probably get the same answer as what's a hot dog. Hey, Mycroft. What's hot dogging? <laughs> you're, you're not a surfer. Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> doesn't understand. Sorry, doesn't understand. 
Also, what would be interesting is what does Alexa and Google Voice Assistant return for who is the Vice President of the United States versus what is the Vice President of the United States? That's a good point. I can test that. Anyway, all right. So we'll see everybody tomorrow. All right. See you. Bye -bye.